In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create simple yet satisfying text animations in Adobe After Effects. And I'm gonna keep things nice and simple, so if you've never used After Effects before or you've always just felt daunted by it, this video should help you feel more comfortable. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So to start, I'm gonna be using After Effects 2020, but really any version should work fine. Now with After Effects, there are some similarities to video editing in something like Premiere, but it does have a lot of differences. One of those differences is with video editing, you have sequences and in After Effects, you have compositions. So just think of compositions as your sequence. So to start, the first thing that we wanna do is create a composition. We can click this button here in the middle or down in our project panel, this icon. Now we can adjust the composition settings. I'll start by renaming the composition and then I'm gonna create a 4K composition to match my footage I'm editing. Okay, so I just realized I'm a doofus and I typed in the wrong resolution. It's supposed to be 3840 by 2160. I typed in 1920, so throughout this whole tutorial, I didn't do a 16 by nine aspect ratio like I normally would. So you can just ignore that. Everything else still applies the same way. Um, I just messed up. My frame rate is 23.976, but again, change this to match the footage that you'll be working with. The last thing to adjust is the duration. We can always change this later, but for most of my title animations, I just need about three or four seconds. For this example, I'll set it to 10 seconds. Then we can click okay. Now it's opened up the composition below in our timeline area. It's currently empty, and since our composition background blends right into the color of our interface, I'm gonna change that just so I can show you how. To adjust your composition settings after you've created a comp, you can select it and press Command or Control K, or simply right click and choose Composition Settings. Now I'll change the background color so we can see our comp. There we go. It's important to note that this color is just for your own purposes when you're working. It won't actually show when you render the animation. You can always check this by turning on the alpha or transparency with this button. The checkerboard shows us that there is transparency with this comp and it's not a solid color. All right, so now let's add a photo to our composition. I'm just gonna drag a photo from Finder to my timeline. Now this photo is a little big, so we can easily resize it to fit our comp by right-clicking, choosing Transform, Fit to Comp Width. We can then reposition it by clicking on the photo and dragging. Okay, now let's add some text. Select the text tool from the top toolbar and click on your composition and start typing away. Then I'll highlight the text and over in my character panel, I can adjust the font, size, color, and other parameters. Now for this, I want the text to be center aligned, so I'll open paragraph and choose center, then open align and click the icon to center the text horizontally in our composition. Okay, now let's animate this text. With the text layer selected, I'll go up to the animation menu and choose add text selector range. This adds the range selector animator to our layer below. Slightly out of range. Let's click the arrow to open up the properties. So what exactly is the range selector doing? Well, let's click and drag to the left on the end value. We can see the red line move one character at a time, so let's animate this end position. When our animation is complete, we want the end value to be 100%, so let's move forward in time. Let's try 20 frames. If you press shift and page down on your keyboard, it will move your playback head by 10 frames, so doing this twice will put us at 20 frames. Now let's click the stopwatch icon next to end to enable animation for this property and set a keyframe. Now we can move back to the beginning of our comp and change the value to 0%. Now we have the value animating from zero to 100, but it's not doing anything yet because we need to animate another property first. We want our letters to appear on screen over time, so we need to animate the opacity to help accomplish this. To the right of animator one, click the arrow by add, go to property, opacity. Now let's keyframe the opacity from zero to 100, just like we did with the range selector. A simple way to jump to your next keyframe is pressing K on the keyboard. This moves us 20 frames, and now we can click the stopwatch next to opacity. Now to jump back to our previous keyframe, we can press J on the keyboard and change the opacity to 0%. So playing it back, we can see it's kind of starting to work, but let's adjust a few more settings. Flip open the advanced settings under the range selector, scroll to the bottom where it says randomize order, and switch that to on. Now we can see it's working better, but still at the beginning, our entire word is shown and we want it to be completely invisible. All we have to do is change the start value on the range selector to 100%. Another thing I like to do is animate a little blur effect as it animates on. So to do this, go to Add, Property, Blur. Let's move to the 20 frame mark, click the stopwatch next to Blur to enable animation, and set a keyframe at zero. Then let's move to the start of the animation. Blur works in pixel amount, so let's try a 20 pixel blur. If we want even more blur, we can increase the amount 
Just make sure you're changing the value of the first keyframe. If you're a few frames into your animation and you adjust the blur, it'll set a keyframe at that time and will probably not do what you want it to do. So After Effects isn't like Premiere where you can just hit enter and it'll play back perfectly in real time. It has to try and process all of this animation you're doing and then show it to you. So the more complex your animations get, the longer it will take to load and then play back in real time. To waiting. So since our animation is actually pretty short, let's change our work area so that we can just watch our animation and not the entire 10 second duration of the composition. You can drag the end of this bar above the timeline to adjust your work area. Your keys may vary from mine, but pressing spacebar or zero on my number pad starts playback, but you can also do so by clicking the play button in the preview tab. So now we have a pretty simple text animation that looks nice with just a few keyframes. Now, if we want to adjust the timing of the animation, we can do so by highlighting our end keyframes and moving them. Moving them to the right will make the animation slower and moving them to the left will make the animation faster. Another easy way to move your highlighted keyframes is by holding Option or Alt on your keyboard and using your arrow keys. If you want to move the keyframes 10 frames at a time, just hold Shift and Option along with the right or left arrow keys. So since After Effects is layer-based, if we want to take part of the boat in the background and mask it out in front of our text, we can do so simply by duplicating the background layer and then just putting it above the text layer. Command or Control D to duplicate, and then click and drag to move it above the text layer. And we can close these text properties too to simplify our work area. Now I'm going to scroll on the comp to zoom in. And so I know exactly what part of the boat I need to mask out. I'm actually going to lower the opacity of this entire layer. Press T to open the opacity property and then lower it so you can see the text. And if you want to move around while zoomed in, just hold spacebar and click and drag to reframe your view. Let's grab the pen tool and just start drawing along the boat to create a mask. To create a bezier curve, just click and hold and then drag the cursor to create your angle. You can then press Option or Alt to break the bezier handle and adjust the angle. Once you're done, you can fit the composition to your frame by pressing Shift forward slash. Okay, with that done, let's adjust the mask properties. I'll start by pressing F for feather. I think a five pixel feather works pretty well here. That just softens the mask so it's not a hard edge. And now we can see we have this blue halo around our mask. So to remove it, I'll go to my effects and presets panel and type in choker. I'll double click on the simple choker and increase the value of the choke mat until the halo disappears. And then the last thing we can do is cut out this blue sky from our mask here. I'll just grab the pen tool and draw a mask around it and then change the mask mode to subtract. And if you want to take a look without the masks in the way, you can hide them by toggling them off with this icon. Cool, let's take a look. I hope that was pretty simple to follow. Now let's take a look at another simple way to animate text. Okay, ready? Now. Squarespace! All right, my first time making a website. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. Let's do this. I'm already done making my website. Are you surprised? I am. I'm really impressed with Squarespace's blogging tools. Yay. Whoa, they've got email campaigns? I'm totally gonna send one. <sighs> that was totally worth it. Look at all this traffic overview. It's all right here. A year ago, I didn't think I could have my own beautiful website. But Squarespace made it so easy. Thank you. This year, give yourself the gift of your own beautiful website with Squarespace. Save 10% when you use the code Mango Street at checkout. Head to the link in our description to get started. So whenever I have several words I'm animating for a title, I like to change the way each group animates on. The first word has a random opacity animation. So now let's animate the position for our next group. I'll start by just writing out the text and choosing the size and font. And I want this to be left aligned to my first word. I also want this to animate on after the first word. So I'll press U on the animating text layer to show all the keyframes. So I know when it's done animating and then J on the keyboard to move my playhead to previous keyframe. Okay, now let's open the position properties on our new text layer by pressing P on the keyboard. One thing I almost always do is split the dimensions on my position property. The X position is left and right, and the Y position is up and down, and splitting them just gives you more flexibility down the road. So now let's click the stopwatch next to the Y position. Since this is where I want the text to be at the end of the animation, let's move this end keyframe 20 frames ahead by pressing Shift, Option, 
and pressing the right arrow key twice. Now that keyframe is later in time, so I can choose the starting Y position. I want it to animate down, so I'll adjust the Y position so the text starts higher. Scrubbing through, we can see how this text will slide in, but this looks messy as is, and I want the text to be hidden completely behind the word animating. So to do this, let's create a mat. This mat will hide whatever it covers. Using the rectangle tool, I will just click and drag to create a box where we want the text to be hidden. And we can see it's actually not doing what we want it to be doing. It's creating a mask on the text layer instead of creating a separate shape layer. So the reason it's doing this is because we drew a rectangle with the text layer selected. So let's delete the mask and click below to deselect that layer. Now we can draw the rectangle tool and it will create a new shape layer instead of just a mask. So now on our text layer, all we have to do is change the track mat to alpha inverted mat. If you don't see the track mat, just click this icon. Now this automatically made our shape layer invisible and will hide the text when it's over any area that the rectangle covers. Let's take a look. Okay, that's pretty cool, but the movement is just completely linear. It's pretty boring. An easy way to give it a little more polish is by adjusting how the movement is interpolated between keyframes. Let's select both position keyframes, right click, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. This adjusts the movement so that it starts and ends a little slower. It just creates a more dynamic look. But it's pretty subtle, so let's increase the slow to start and slow to end feel. With the keyframe selected, I'm gonna click this icon to open the graph editor. Now I'll highlight those keyframes and we can see we have this Bezier curve with handles. We can pull the handles out farther to exaggerate the beginning and end movement. Just hold Shift when you drag the handles to keep them straight. Okay, now let's take a look. That looks a lot better. Okay, so now let's go ahead and export this. I always prefer exporting out of After Effects and importing into Premiere instead of using something like Dynamic Link because I find it just slows my computer down and sometimes creates linking issues. So first, set your work area again so that it only renders out what you want. Let's make this animation three seconds. Pressing N on the keyboard will move the end of your work area to your playhead. To move the beginning, press B on your keyboard, but we don't really need to do that here. Then go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. For the settings, I usually use ProRes 422. If you don't have a preset for it, you can go to Custom and just make sure your format is set to QuickTime and then click Format Options. Change that to Apple ProRes 422 and click OK. And OK again. Where it says Output 2, click on the title to choose where it will save and then just click Render. And that's all there really is to it. I wanted to keep this tutorial simple so that it hopefully starts to demystify After Effects for you. And of course, there is so much more intricacies and tips and tricks that we could get into. So if you do wanna see more After Effects tutorials, let us know in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions about anything I did in this video, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it. That's all for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.